Uh, Assalamu alaikum everybody. My name is Dr. Amir Abbas. I'm talking to you people once again from Pittsburgh, United States. And in this series of uh, talks in which we are inviting different guests from different parts of the world and leading experts in different fields. Today we have, we have, we have a very senior and distinguished guest with us. Yeah. His name is Professor Muhammad Iqbal Khan, and Professor Dr. Muhammad Iqbal Khan. He's the Vice Chancellor of Shifa Tamire Millet University and Professor Dr. Muhammad Iqbal Khan is a medical graduate. Uh, uh, he graduated in 1985 and he holds fellowship in surgery from Royal College of Surgeons of England and Glasgow. He has a diploma in vascular surgery from UK and masters in health professional education in Netherlands. He has held, uh, he has held numerous academic clinical leadership positions both nationally in Pakistan and internationally. He is a former dean of Faculty of Health and Medical Sciences in the University of Azad Jammu and Kashmir and founder principal of Azad Jammu and Kashmir Medical College Muzaffarabad and earlier served at Rifa International University as head of surgery and of clinical sciences besides serving at various positions in natural health, National Health Services UK. He remained chairman of the Consortium of Islamic Medical College of for eight years and still serves the organization as executive member. He has vast teaching experience at under and postgraduate level and a surgeon of premier repute. Dr. Muhammad Iqbal Khan has presented more than 230 papers in national and international conferences. He has 69 publications to his credit and has authored 14 book chapters and six books. Sir, first of all, thanks a lot for giving us this opportunity to talk to you on this topic. Thank you very much for taking me uh, on board and uh, I'm really obliged to, to share my views with the rest of the world, um, being an educationist and uh, a clinician over the last 35 years in this profession. So uh, I'm, I'm glad to share my views with you uh, this afternoon. Right. So, as our topic today is the challenges in the context of COVID-19 pandemic and the challenge in uh, in this situation in relation in relationship to the medical education. So, without it, uh, wasting any further time, my first question is that what challenges do you see in the context of medical education in Pakistan during this COVID-19 pandemic? Thank you very much. This is a, certainly a very difficult and a new situation for the Pakistani medics uh, and particularly uh, the, the region, uh, the whole region has suffered a lot and I believe that the whole world has suffered a lot and particularly the medics. On one hand, uh, a, a big number of medical graduates are required uh, to every single country to meet this, uh, this, uh, the current challenges, but at the same time, there is a lockdown. The, what I was uh, trying to say that the emerging situation from the, fer, uh, the end of the February till now, um, our uh, campuses are closed, medical schools, dental schools, health professional, educational institutions are closed. There is no activity on the campus and the, the uh, clinics are working only for the covered patients and for emergencies. Now in this situation, uh, not only the clinical teaching is suffering, but the teaching at, at the level of uh, uh, campuses is badly affected. Not only badly affected, but in, at certain places, we are unable to run, particularly the laboratories, um, the, uh, the our uh, clinical hear me now. The, does it still uh, interrupt, Vice? I uh, no. I think I can hear now. It's clear. Okay. Um, the the clinical rotations are totally um, abandoned, and all the uh, activities in the clinical sites, bedside teachings, uh, clinical rotation, clock shifts are abundant now. And uh, quickly, we, uh, we developed some uh, um, online education system. 
uh, in certain institution like Shifa College of Medicine, in Shifa College of Dentistry, Shifa College of Pharmaceutical Sciences, and Shifa College of uh, uh, Rehabilitation Medicine, <clears throat> quickly we developed and rather we change ourselves the uh, the education turns on uh, online and therefore the quality of education i personally believe is not as of that it should be it is because of the uh, sudden change of uh, uh, from the face to face education to virtual education and secondly training of the faculty as well. Not all the faculty was trained for that particular purpose. Therefore, we faced a lot of problems, but over the period of time, we coped with the situation. The practical aspects of everything has been almost delivered to, uh, to the student uh, with the reasonable perfection. But the practical aspects of the learning, which is an important aspect in health professional education, um, it's not only the theory you need to have the three important components of education are the cognition or <clears throat> theoretical and we have psychomotor skills that means the you do on uh, uh, hands on and you develop a certain um, attitude during effective your effective demand is being developed or you develop certain attitude which actually coordinate both the the psycho uh, over the period of time, over the period of six, uh, three, four months, we certainly um, uh, uh, polish few things and uh, develop few more things for um, uh, education. Uh, as far as the uh, theoretical part of education is concerned, it has been uh, almost completed by this time. But unfortunately, the major part of the uh, the uh, uh, education is our development of skills. If you uh, virtually cannot develop some skills online. It is difficult. Uh, maybe in future some simulator will come out, and I suggest that there should be some simulator to cope with the emerging situation. But at this moment, though we have a very good uh, our skill and uh, simulation lab, but unfortunately, that was not made uh, usable for the uh, for the virtual education. So uh, our whole system changed. So every um, uh, single class, we developed quickly a, a flip class and a flip classroom, and quickly developed some some other. Uh, modalities of transmitting uh, it, uh, our uh, knowledge to the to our students but there are few challenges the challenges are number one the challenges of connectivity as we see uh, here there is no uh, though I am sitting in a very uh, probably in a prime place in Islam uh, there should be a good connectivity but still we are facing what do you think about a person sitting in a uh, uh, but sitting somewhere else, there's a lot of uh, difficulties in, in connectivity. One problem of connectivity. And secondly, the problem of access as well. In certain places, even the, the access is not because the students were sent home. They, the hostel were vacated uh, by the order of the government of Pakistan. And therefore, this was another issue that we couldn't be able to keep those students here. Some of the students who were foreigners, the students from the United States, UK, Middle East, and other places, they stuck up in the, uh, the hostels and they were managed in the hostel. But uh, majority of the students were sent to, to home. So this, this was another big challenge. And third, the most important one is the, the, the training of our faculty. The few of member of the faculty were quickly trained, but what we did, we uh, devised a few uh, workshops, online workshop for the uh, faculty. So we conducted several workshops to train our faculty to deliver the finest quality of education to our students. Alhamdulillah, that was done from our part. 
Now, now what we see in future, uh, normally we finish uh, our, uh, our medical schools and dental schools, finish at the end of September their curriculum and they go for the annual examination, which is a, which is a formality for SHIPA because our majority of our staff is being continuously assessed during the uh, uh, during the year and and the, throughout the five year we assess and give a good weightage to that uh, assessment as well. Apart from our uh, assessment, a summary assessment is being done as well throughout the year. So this is also suffering. So uh, we couldn't be able to develop quickly some uh, mm -hmm. a mechanism to um, to conduct some uh, summative type of uh, uh, the, the assessment uh, of our students. So therefore, this is another challenge for us to how to develop and we are working very intensively with universities. We are trying our level best to set up a new system of uh, assessment so that the student could be assessed uh, online as well. But again, the practical aspects of assessment is, will be very, very difficult uh, to assess online. It is very important for us and, and effective demands is also very important for us and it cannot be uh, assessed totally online. So these are the few challenges. And the other challenges which we see that if COVID, this COVID-19 situation continues beyond two months more, the, our system will not be able to cope with the emerging situation. So this, this is another, and, and then we, our whole fidelity, you will see, you will, it is amazing that we have been paying full uh, without any deduction to our whole fidelity. So we will be facing a financial problem in future because we have paid off to our fidelity throughout this, this period. We consider that it's not their fault if they, uh, and why they should be punished, they are ready to teach, but the situation is uh, changed. And therefore, this is another challenge for us, how to cope with the emerging situation. We cannot charge our students extra. Rather, the students should be given some concession because they are not coming to the, uh, to, to the uh, campuses. So this is another uh, challenge for us. Uh, in, in, uh, in. So these are the few things which I wanted to share with you, but how to meet these challenges is more important. Now, what I see, there is an opportunity in every, every difficulty there. So we quickly developed our LS, uh, LMS system, though it was existing in the past as well, but we have refined it, we have made it more useful for the for our students, uh, and we made it available to all our students. We made sure that every our student should get the uh, access. We use the synchronous as well as the asynchronous mode, and we also use our webinars and we uh, we try to connect to every single student and uh, try to communicate with our, our single student so that they we, they can share their difficult learning difficulties with us and it should be resolved uh, we try to resolve it as far as it is possible so these are the, the this how we manage and the second thing is the, alhamdulillah we had a lot of uh, um, the online learning resources. So this, our library helped us a lot. So though we developed it and we didn't use it uh, properly in the past, we had that we have nearly um, a, a very big number of books, a, a very large number of journals with us in the library, e-library. E but unfortunately, we in Pakistani nation is more uh, customized with the uh, reading uh, reading books. And, but this uh, online material was used now and we are proud that we could be able to use it for every other single student we used to post, uh, post them all this material and they uh, learn it through this material. And this is a, a mostly a theoretic, theoretical aspect and mostly that aspect which can be communicated uh, with on, uh, online as well. So this, now our LSMS system is the learning management system as refined over the period of time. But if this uh, COVID continues beyond two months more, then probably we, we will 
uh, uh, modify it so that the practical aspect and some of, uh, aspects of simulation should be added, will be added up in there. Few aspects of simulation we have so clinical teaching for clinical uh, methods, for example, are in clinical examination of uh, uh, the patient. For example, we added up already in our uh, in our teaching program. And, the, and then thirdly, most importantly, the, our hospital is one of the best hospital in the Southeast Asia, SCI accredited hospital. And therefore, this hospital quickly managed to develop some uh, some virtual clinics. And now we are going for the virtual hospital. This virtual clinic and virtual hospital help not only the patients, but our community as well as our students as well. This modality is, is not fully used nowadays in uh, for the clinical teaching, but in future, in near future, we will be able to use this, our uh, virtual clinics, virtual hospital uh, for the clinical teaching as well. Now, um, about the rotations, uh, uh, we don't have a typical rotations as in other places. We have clerkship. The clerkship is a scheduling clerkship. That means the every single stud student shadow a, a internationally renowned uh, teacher in that particular subject, say in dermatology, in say, vascular surgery, in any uh, uh, branches of, of medicine, they usually follow uh, a shadow their their teacher, uh, and uh, they, they, they are top-notch consultants from all around, uh, trained in, in, in the United States and UK and in Pakistan. They shadow these, so it is difficult nowadays. Now, now they they can shadow their virtual clinics, but actually their ward rounds, their uh, 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 operative sessions, and so on and so forth, and procedures cannot be actually trans tra transmitted to them. So this is another um, uh, difficulty and we are trying to cope with these difficulties as well. Now what we have done in our class, there are two, um, in clinical teaching, we have a two clerkships. This is a junior clerkship, this is the fourth year, and the senior clerkship is in final year. So what we have done, the theoretical part of that clerkship has been already given to the students in detail and they are being assessed on that as well. Now, the, uh, if, for example, a rotation in general surgical program is for uh, 14 months or 12 months, it has been reduced to half. When the student will come actually on campus and will join in the hospital environment, they will actually will go only to the practical aspects of the learning. They will not uh, go through the, the theoretical, the, so the other, in other words, they will not be having any lectures, any tutorials, or any uh, seminars, etc. They will be just going to through the scheduling program and they will schedule their teachers and uh, in the ward rounds, in the uh, outpatient clinics, in procedures, in operating rooms, and so on and so forth. So this is how we are planning publicly. Uh, as far as the, yes. Uh, I just want to I apologize for intervening. Uh, just want to ask a question that uh, Shifa uh, Institute is one of the resourceful institute in Pakistan, but there are many other medical institutes which are not as resourceful as Shifa Institute. So unlike especially the government institutes. Uh, so as a senior um, uh, medical educationist, and a leader in this field, what would you suggest to them in this, on the basis of your experience? Um, first of all, through your program, I offered every single government or private institution in Pakistan, I, I, I'm here to extend my wholehearted support. But where, where we learn over the period of time, we can always share with anyone online resources we can share, online what material we developed over the period of time, questions and so on and so forth, everything can be shared. Online teaching material can be shared with them. Online methodology of learning can be shared. And second, the, the most importantly, the whole system which we have developed over the period of time can be shared with anyone. This is not a, uh, something, something which should be uh, kept with, with us. 
uh, it is the public property and we can share with any institution willing to adopt our system. But the government institutions, they are more resourceful. They are more resourceful. Why? Uh, they have a uh, good number of faculty members probably and they have good number of uh, patients as well. Better than many other institutions because we are truly a tertiary care hospital. But there are other hospitals, uh, particularly big hospitals in, in like Lahore, in, uh, Karachi, Islamabad, Peshawar, etc. They are different hospitals uh, providing uh, clinical care to the patients. Those hospitals can quickly adopt the virtual, uh, uh, virtual. It's not difficult, it's not very expensive as the Government has already launched these uh, LMS uh, programs in the in these institutions. Now it should be I I will advise the uh, leadership of this institution to collaborate with those who have already done. There is no need to reinvent the wheel. So you can collaborate with the other. So particularly, a Shafa is uh, already has offered to every single institution. Those who want to develop, we can share with you all our experience. Not only experience, we can develop your faculty, or we can contribute in the faculty development program of your institution, any institution. Uh, so it's it's a very generous offer from our side without any um, financial or other uh, benefit to Shifa. So this this is uh, we developed it with a huge financial resources as well. It's not well. Yeah, I think. Uh, yeah, I agree that this is a very generous offer, and I think through this uh, video we will be communicating it to the leadership of other institutions that if you need, you can indirectly reach out to find national institution and their leadership for if you need any help. Uh, going forward, uh, as we know that this COVID nineteen pandemic will. Uh, not end very soon, especially like the, uh, I mean, maybe the peak of the curve will end, but uh, this infection is going to sustain. So if we go forward, uh, I think you cannot, uh, I mean, uh, the medical students are required to be trained in the institution and there will be a time when they will be required to rotate because uh, you cannot train doctors without being rotated. And at the same time, what would you recommend that like their exposure is also minimized uh, I mean, because medical students will be uh, at the risk of adopting the infection, and we, uh, there's always a resource constraint as well. Um, and then the question arises that uh, the PPEs from where will they come? Will the uh, institution provide them, or the students will arrange for them? So, what do you think in this context? Uh, how should this particular aspect be managed? First of all, I, I just want to share with you my a little bit of experience working in the, in the public sector, the uh, public sector uh, medication. I established one institution from stretch and it is a record that the institution was uh, developed very quickly and in 59 days time it was recognized with a very high marks by the uh, Pakistan Medical and then Uh, when I was appointed as a principal and the dean of a medical school in Muzaffarabad, uh, that is in Azad, which was they were trying to establish a medical school for the last years. And you will be surprised to know that many principals were retired, appointed and retired, and many other faculty members were appointed and retired without having any medical school. So this is how the thing was. When I took over, uh, alhamdulillah, in 59 days' time, at the school of Prashner. And this was the first school in public sector which offered the problem based modular contextual education to the student from very beginning. And there was the resource constraint. So, Working in a resource constrained environment, I just want to give you an example. And working in a resource con constrained environment is actually test your intelligence. So, therefore, uh, you need to switch some things to the other and also adapt to the emerging situation. So, uh, 
we are not a very resourceful in pakistan not a single institution in pakistan i believe is as resourceful as in united states or uk but you produce the finest quality of graduate who works and are being appreciated in united states and uk are other developed countries and they are of the same standard if not higher than that standard as well so uh, therefore i i strongly believe that the institutions must adapt to the emerging situation first of all they should predict what is going to happen so if we predict predict that the covid situation might continue for another 6 months for example we should foresee and plan for 6 months how we are going to to work in this situation now to students yes students uh, coming back is a co in cohort are in a, in in a big number and in, uh, in, in the campuses and particularly in the hospital in the clinical situation uh, may create a lot of uh, problem and actually the infection uh, control might be disrupted therefore uh, i will suggest to limit the, to the uh, minimum number of student in one group number 2 the the rotation system should be uh, sh uh, scheduled from morning to, to the evening in uh, in uh, groups so that the student could be able to go through that and again uh, in while the students are uh, on them student can use uh, as far as it is possible the online resources as well and virtual resources so virtual resources should not be abandoned but they should be more refined during this period so that there should be minimum contact uh, of the student to the infect infected patients and secondly the safety now the safety measures which we uh, propose to our students is their health check up their health care and secondly uh, their, their protective measures and the probably the ppe which should be are uh, provided to every single student so that they could be able to protect themselves and the other uh, uh, student and patients from the spread of it we have to live with that we need to adopt our situation with the emerging uh, our our our, um, our resources with the emerging situation i don't believe that it will cost more because uh, it might cost but not cost as much as we cannot afford i think the pakistani institutions are resourceful enough to cope with the emerging situation with the with the few cautions which we have to take now at certain places i strongly believe the monetary resources are not as much required as the intellectual resources are required so this need a lot of intellectual input in the end the experience of the others should be utilized there we are looking at the experience of the others as well i know there are many medical institutions in china they were open up and in the, i know the in, in near future the new zealand and australia is going to open up so going forward uh, uh, and uh, one important question which i have is that uh, for the medical students especially the final year medical students because they have to uh, graduate quickly and their career is dependent and this covid-19 pandemic has affected their graduation and all of the schedule so uh, do you recommend that emerging on because everything as we are opening like in pakistan we are not completely locked down right so is it possible for the institutions to arrange the examinations for final year medical students through social distancing first of all we need to complete first the curriculum this is very important they need to complete the remaining curriculum that means i i as i told you the their final year is the final year clerkship program it runs in in the in the different uh, uh, in clinical rotations this clinical clerkship program has two component the theoretical and the uh, practical component some of some part of the practical component we have already delivered to them now hands on practical components will be delivered once they come on on campuses 
if this situation will continue, even then in small groups, we have not more than six students in one group. So in small groups, we can even continue uh, with special, uh, taking special precautions, we can continue with their training program. Once we complete this program, I uh, expect that in uh, one and a half to two months time in different groups, we can to uh, fill the gap and then ask the students to come for the exam. Now about the examination, it's very important. We have uh, already, our university has put on the website a very transparent system of assessment of our students. Online as well as virtual as well as the face-to-face. -face. Even for the postgraduate students, we arrange online Viva uh, as well. Uh, and this was uh, designed by our uh, UK-based, very eminent uh, uh, professor in, in medical education. She is a professor, Janet. Uh, she has designed and uh, next week only, inshallah, we will be, uh, uh, we, we will be conducting online Viva uh, with, with the teacher, with external as well as internal examiner. This is one thing. The second thing which we are going to do is that we would, uh, th there are two things in my mind. One thing is the student uh, graduation is delayed and they, they lose the semester. That means they lose actually the, the academic year. So I will not opt that, uh, uh, that option. I will opt uh, work intensively, work day and night, and cope up with the, uh, uh, fill the gaps, and cope up with the emerging situation, and come up with the uh, graduation, might be delayed up to two months. If this, this situation will continue, we might delay the, the uh, graduation up to two months. Not later than two months, we will be graduating our class, uh, fine year MBBS, the other classes have least pro less, less problem because you can adjust some subject can, can be taught next year as some part, part of the material of uh, the courses of one semester can be uh, transferred to the next semester as well. Question emerges. So therefore, we will readjust the system. We, we, we will readjust number one, our curriculum contents, curricular contents. And secondly, we will readjust our uh, teaching strategy or delivery system as well. So we will readjust for the other classes. For the final year, we will try to cope with the emerging situation by putting more time, more faculty, and the, uh, uh, the more intensive work so that the students should not lose the, uh, the year or the semester. Yeah, so I think, uh, so in taking this forward, I mean, Shifa International is, I know that it is very organized and I mean, proactive in these matters. Uh, but uh, what do you suggest, like the central regulatory body in Pakistan is Pakistan Medical and Dental Council, right? Uh, don't you think that they should come in and play and uh, take a leadership role in making the strategy in this uh, current crisis for, to solve all these problems, especially, especially for the final medical students? Um, this said to say, of PMDC over the last 10 years I've seen uh, has, has not been as supportive to medical education as it should be. Though the number of medical educationists, in, of trained medical educationists in Pakistan has uh, increased enormously, the interest in medical education is increased. But unfortunately, the regulatory part of uh, the accreditation and the recognition of uh, under and postgraduate medical education is separate. And you might have seen the turmoil in Pakistan, the, the PMDC was, uh, by the previous government, the PMDC um, was uh, abolished by a new PMDC and new PMDC was again, and that was abolished by the court and a, a, a new team of uh, PMDC came headed by uh, Justice Hub, 
and uh, that was abolished by uh, with, with, with another PMDC, and that that PMDC ordinance was lapsed, and the PMC ordinance came that was lapsed, and now the PMDC began, again came to square one to 2012 modified. Um, uh, Parliament, which was uh, modified from uh, 1962's uh, uh, a, a, a PMDC article, uh, is again in practice. Now there is a lot of controversies. Whatever the previous, there is there is a problem with our DNA. I think. I'm sorry, don't quote it somewhere. So every new person, when he, once he come, he should continue what the previous. No. But it will say if you are building a, 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 a building, so if somebody has done the half of wall, come and do the rest of the job and put some ceiling or whatever over there. Instead of that, what do we do? We root out everything first and try to try to build our own, our own building. And that's happening in PMDC. I met the president of uh, current PMDC, the very pleasant chair very educated person, very dedicated and sincere person. I've seen him very, uh, very dedicated and very sincere person. Sorry, sir, can you repeat the last part? It was breaking, I was not able to hear. I, I met the president of PMDC, uh, the Justice of. Okay. The honest person, number one. He's a very transparent person, number two. He's a very dedicated, all the qualities, but he is a justice. He is a law graduate. He's, he's not a medical specialist. He's not a doctor. He's not a oh, He doesn't have any idea about the medical education, an undergraduate and postgraduate. But the good thing about him is that he's listening to the people. So this is, therefore, I see a ray of hope that maybe in future he will be able to put up all things together and come up with the reorganization of PMDC. The role of PMDC is not only the reg to regulate the medical education, but medical practices. But unfortunately, that part of that, that part of uh, that role of uh, medical uh, the, the Pakistan medical. I told you that there, there are two important part of the, uh, the two main uh, aspects of. PMDC working. Number one is the regulation of medical education in the country. Number two is the regulation of the medical practice. But unfortunately, over the last 10 to 15 years, the second part, which is more important for me, is the, uh, the regulation of medical practice in Pakistan was ignored. So this part should be also included so that it should co be coherent with the practice and education. If you develop the education in isolation and it's not related with the practice then they so i met him twice and uh, for a stretch of uh, one and a half hour every time and uh, i i offer him that first of all this medical education uh, this pmdc doesn't have any representation from the private sector at all it's an official body so if the, uh, the, there are the, the many uh, the number of medical school in private sector in Pakistan and dental school in Pakistan are much higher than the public sector. But they are not being represented in the new regulatory body. Number, I, I requested them to to make some arrangement that they are they should be represented. And secondly, the those things which has been done in the past, let us take a, a, a start, do a stock taking of what good thing has been done. Not everything was bad. Some good work has been done. Let's do the start taking up there and come up with the, uh, let's build uh, a new, uh, the, the, the further building on that. So a lot of work has been done on, in medical education as well. And the, uh, to reform the, the curriculum. You will be surprised to know a majority of the medical and dental schools in Pakistan, they are practicing about 80 years old um, uh, education system. And majority of the medical schools in Pakistan, they don't have 
even the curriculum curriculum for them they just show you the slavers which they have uh, uh, learned from the from the past so it is very important that now we should come up with the reformation of yeah, our educational system it is the duty of pmdc to involve all those sincere educationists and come up with the unified curriculum for the whole country and the standards should be set up for the whole country similarly the private sector or a public sector they should because when the patient will come to you he will not ask you whether you were trained in a private sector hospital or in a public sector hospital so it is very it should be unified for everyone and the most importantly the services of those people who are who volunteer themselves for the education should be taken if we will not do that then probably we, the failure is our destiny and secondly uh, the uh, medical practice in pakistan should be regulated by the pmdc it is being done by gmc because pmdc is one of the offshoot of uh, gmc i, I believe so the work with the civil but that gmc has revolutionized over the over itself over the period of time but we have been going ups and down a uh, one step uh, uh, forward and two steps backward so this was our story but yeah. i i i think uh, there is a, some hope that the new system the new adapt council which was uh, the, the function of this council is to see day to day my year the, the mandate of this council is to say day to day things and secondly to uh, conduct elections for the so the the permanent council in pakistan i'm not sure uh, as far as i know they, we don't see election in the near future and we we see that this adhak council will be working and uh, you know the adhak person is a time being per person who um uh, in uh, in punjabi we say dang tapau this word <laughs> that that they, they pass the time so yeah if i do that sure that i've actually worked as an inspector in pmdc in pakistan so i know like when the new thing you know mm. people come they just like i mean and especially the interim bodies they just like pass the time so and and, and mostly what i say they that the workers yes there are there are few sincere workers there as well but but the majority of the pmdc is probably engulfed by a mafia so not everything is was bad when this uh, pmdc was dissolved but not everything was good when this pmdc was dissolved therefore uh, i remain the member of pmdc as well i saw the, the many ups and down in pmdc but unfortunately if your your personal in, interest override the uh, common interest or the interest of the society then there is a problem so, so uh, taking the discussion forward uh, in the context of you talked about the practice and uh, do the medical education for the undergraduate is getting affected but i what is more concerning is the post graduate training which is getting affected because of the covid 19 though the hospitals are populated with the covid patients with the routine procedures especially elective surgeries as you being a practicing uh, surgeon uh, and a very senior uh, surgeon uh, along with the medical edu- being a medical educationist how would you suggest that this gap should be uh, fulfilled especially bringing into the discussion the role of cpsp in this context how would you suggest that i think the cpsp is the only institution in pakistan uh though i have a lot of reservation about cpsp as well but along with these reservation i have a lot of respect for cpsp as well this is the only institution in medical sciences in pakistan which probably maintains its integrity and they have worked hard to maintain this their integrity they recognize not only nationally but globally as well cpsp uh is also uh, sometimes making certain decisions which might not be in the best interest of our 
our people. But uh, a majority of their work is, I, I really appreciate their work and I really appreciate the zeal and interest of the president as well. Though, um, uh, uh, he has uh, uh, spent a lot of time, in maybe 10 to 15 years in this position. Uh, but apart from uh, other, other things, the good thing is that he is a good listener and he acts upon the things quickly. And the P, uh, I would suggest CPSP to reorganize their training system as well. Because uh, if I see, uh, I'm a trainer in vascular surgery. So majority of these, these days, we only take the emergency cases. We don't do uh, elective surgery during this period. So therefore, the patients who are uh, elective patients are those patients who are the cold patient. They, they are not allowed to enter into outpatient department. And naturally, they are not being operated as well. So naturally, our uh, our our trainee, trainees they are lacking the uh, this part of their training. They are very well trained in emergency situation. This is one good aspect of uh, the this COVID as well. But at the same time, they are lacking the the some part of their training which uh, which should be uh, the, this gap should be filled by one way or the other in future. I think uh, the CPSP should look into the uh, every single training system um, and, and see uh, they, they might have polished their infectious disease uh, the program, but the other programs might, must be looked into it as well. So that the, the, uh, the gaps which were created during this period and will be created maybe another two or three months should be filled by, uh, appropriately and with the adequate uh, uh, knowledge and the student might need a little bit more training and they might extend two to three months of their trainings. Uh, Last part. In Shifa, we have the maximum number of uh, training program uh, uh, launched by the CPSP. And some of the rare program we launched, like vascular surgery, like endocrine, like um, infectious diseases, like emergency programs, so on and so forth. And, uh, and in, in oncology, we have three programs. So all these programs, they have suffered. So what we can do, we can sit down with the PMDC uh, committee and we'll, we, we can share with, with them the clinical teaching and the clinical training system. And therefore, we can modify, and maybe I will suggest that they can extend uh, their the the period of training maybe three to four months longer than the usual periods so that the student should be uh, could be able to gain those gaps uh, fill the, those gaps which were created during this period. Uh, so. Uh... Just uh, taking it forward, as we talked about the online education, and um, and right now I'm talking about both the uh, undergraduate as well as the postgraduate. So Pakistan has a huge number of medical institutions, like uh, uh, and and this I think do and I, I I think this thing, and I would want you to comment on this whether you agree with this or not. That this is an opportunity that the online virtual resources should be made. And uh, with integration, because some of the universities or institutions have skills in one area and others have uh, uh, their strengths in other areas. So if all of them collectively uh, make online resources, virtual lectures available on the basis of their strengths, don't you think that it will be a very good uh, contribution to the Pakistani medical students? A uh, few years back, I was in uh, Sweden. It was four or five years back. They asked me to talk about the uh, medical education. Uh, it was a privilege to talk uh, in, in, the, in the prestigious university about the medical future of medical I foresee that the, the medical school will emerge without building as well. It is possible. Without, without classrooms, without physical classrooms. The concept of virtual classroom, flipped classrooms, and the webinars, and so many so other things are coming. So we need to organize. Now, uh, 
the online education system need refinements need development and also need some of the adjustment as well not everything can be delivered online but majority of the stuff can be delivered online so therefore i uh, i think those schools particularly uh, which my opinion are not meeting the standard they have also an opportunity to come up uh, with the uh, to improve themselves not only in pakistan anywhere in the world if the school medical school and the dental school are health professional other specialty schools are not up to the mark they can build over the period of time quickly and come up with the virtual system and adopt the virtual system so that they can cope with the with the uh, with the gaps and firstly and secondly this is a good opportunity for those resource depleted areas to have an access to the good institution like harvard like um, um, oxford and other good institution in, uh, in, in around the world so uh, all those institution in the world should also generously uh, and openly offer to the every single institutions around the world so those who can avail the opportunities of uh, uh, of uh, an access uh, of uh, to the to the to their learning resource material in their area and particularly online that will be that help to the resource depleted areas like and bangladesh and other areas and maybe there are so many other resource depleted medical schools in the developed part of the world as well not all the medical school in the developed part of world are as good as we are thinking so therefore i i think uh, it is a good time for those who can uh, who can give i will i will suggest the uh, all the institution to behave like a mother you know mother what but the, the mother always gives something so if we develop an habit of giving something so naturally we will receive an in return so uh, this is my humble suggestion for everyone that we need to share our resources with the other people come up with the collaborations more collaboration don't hesitate majority of the schools the old schools in pakistan they didn't develop the recent gadgets of medical education in their institutions and they are shy to adopt the new things because they don't have and they are shy to collaborate with the new institutions like shifa and aghan and other institutions because they think that they they are superior to the so none is superior uh, if you want to learn from your junior or from your senior from uh, uh, the Uh, younger than you or elder than you it's it doesn't matter for me is matter is the knowledge and you all know the knowledge can be acquired from any resources so it is not the somebody's property the, the resources we should declare it is the public property so therefore i i strongly suggest that the institution must come up with the uh, with the open idea that they are ready to adopt the coming a new situation allah subhanahu wa taala will not change us if we don't like to change ourselves in allah la yughayyiru ma bi qawmin hatta yughayyiru ma bi anfusihim so if we don't like to change ourselves automatically the things will not happen so uh, we need to change i'm i'm not talking about the yeah. critical change i'm talking about the changes in medical education yeah इलामा सेड आईने नो से डरना तर्जे कहन पे अड़ना मंजिल यही कठिन है कौमों की जिंदगी दैट आई लेट मी ट्रांसलेट इट वेरी क्रूडली दैट द मोस्ट डिफिकल्ट पार्ट इन द लाइफ एक्शंस इज टू अडॉप्ट द न्यू थिंग्स एंड आई सी देयर आर थ्री टाइप्स ऑफ पीपल इन द वर्ल्ड दोस हु क्रिएट चेंजेस एंड अडॉप्ट देम फॉर द इन द बेस्ट इंटरेस्ट ऑफ देयर पीपल Uh, and the number two people are those people who quickly adopt these changes from the other people and do something good for their nation and there is a third type of people who stand in front of those people and oppose those changes and say we are better 
uh, not able to hear the last last part can you repeat the last part the last point is there there are a third uh, category of the people who oppose the changes any changes they say no we are we are we are good enough with our uh, with our old uh, system of education we don't like to have any change and we have been great. and the, the, the people gave a lot of uh, reasoning that we have been uh, trained and taught in the same system are we inferior doctors are we not good doctor good specialist so i would say look uh, probably you didn't have this uh, laptop this uh, uh, smartphone television and so many other things at that time but the things have, our resources has also changed and therefore we need to adopt the change as well uh, uh, talking of change and i think uh, it's really motivating for me to talk to you and i do not did not realize that we are almost to the end of our time so this is the last question as well and uh, yeah. talking of change uh, as you must have heard that our Khan university has made a center for innovation and medical education and i am uh, as we are talking uh, i think shifa international university also has uh, similar uh, centers so would you like to talk about such centers and the need of such centers in this particularly in this particular era as we as we are in okay uh, to to uh, just just in brief uh, to share the changes which we adopted and the result of that ch changes scientific basis of uh, the the revolutions in the curriculum and the delivery system of our uh, curricular contents to the students and the learning modalities which we developed over the period of time with we are open to share with other institutions for that particular purpose, we developed a school of health professional education at Shafat Amiri Milit University. This school of health professional education has got three important components. Number one, it trains continuously our faculty, which is already practicing, and uh, to familiarize and practice the changes which are going on in the, uh, in the world and uh, in our own situation. We see all those changes we then uh, uh, go through that and what can be adopted in our situation for own faculty so there is a continuous faculty development program for uh, not only for the medical school for dental school for other schools as well we have eight nine schools in uh, shibata amiri Medical university and secondly the other function is to train the other colleges faculty the faculty of other universities so we offer a uh, international uh, certificate course in medical education and this international certificate, certificate is available for everyone and we conducted in different cities from Bahawalpur to Muzaffarabad, Azad Kashmir we conducted several uh, 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 contact sessions there and it is a hybrid type of uh, certificate program which is for six months mainly on uh, online education and but a significant part of that is face-to-face uh, -face education as well this is one then we have a diploma program and we have a degree program as well uh, in this uh, the mhp master in health professional education but uh, is also is also open not only for our fidelity the only our we, we give seats only 25 percent at maximum to our faculty rest of the 70 is being offered very generously to the other institution and we are so this is another then as uh, the third function is the innovation so we continuously work as uh, research based innovation. our people are doing PAD and different things one i can share you one of the uh, uh surprising at the moment you see in our uh, countries the surgical site infection is not comparable with the with the developed world. To break the gap, we have devised a educational intervention. That means the knowledge and gap between the knowledge and practice of the healthcare professional in the operating area to 
prevent the surgical site infection. So this is very important that we have conducted in the private as well as in the public sector, uh, the, the institutions and our uh, candidate is now defending PID from uh, Maastricht University, it's a very renowned university in Netherlands. Uh, Can you repeat uh, uh, the, the Maastricht University is my alma mater as well. And this university uh, uh, is offering a PID program to one of our faculty member who is uh, now uh, in, in the long, uh, last leg of his uh, completion. So therefore, we, we, we are trying our level best to develop the education. So we have another leg of this uh, is the, the research in medical, continuous research in medical education. And, and only in COVID-19 educational intervention, we have six, six projects which are underway. So how we can cope and what, what is our experience and how, what intervention will be required in future as well. And secondly, uh, the, uh, we have a, a university teachers training program. As well. This is another uh, program, which is a certificate initially will be converted into diploma, postgraduate diploma, and then a master program in uh, uh, for the university teacher. This is especially designed those university teachers who are already working in different specialty in different part of the, the country in different universities they are in different departments and they are enrolled online part of the education is online but significant part of this education is face to face as another and uh, here our uh, the, uh, the uh, professor from uh, uh, new zealand and australia and uk and but i am thankful to the uh, Liverpool University Department of uh, Education, uh, they, they helped us in developing. I, I claim this is the first time in Pakistan, the university teachers are being trained to cope with the emerging situation and to, uh, to, uh, uh, to adapt a new educational system and also to do research uh, in, in the light of our own requirement in our country. So this is another. So we, we have uh, uh, some tangible uh, good programs for, for the future for our uh, people in Pakistan. Not only for Shifa, for everyone. Okay, uh, so I think we are almost to the end of our program. Uh, do you want to say anything to our viewers before we end this program? Anything? I... Uh, I think I said enough, but uh, I will be happy to listen anyone who uh, want to contribute. Uh, as a nation, uh, we need to come up with the with, with the solution of our problems. Uh, I I say that uh, look at tuberculosis is people in third world they are dying with tuberculosis nowadays. Still, people are dying, and not in, in uh, hundreds, but in thousands, people are dying with, with tuberculosis. Though it's, it's a, it is a curable disease. And the last drug which came uh, into my uh, knowledge is the rifampicin. And after that, not a single drug was, uh, was synthesized, particularly aiming to treat uh, tuberculosis. Because it is not the problem of the developed world, it's the problem of the developing world. I think our people should think what we need, what we need in our environment, what our people need. So if we think that what our people need, what, our, what type of education our, our uh, society need, and what type of doctor our society need, and the world society, is, we are not uh, uh, isolated from the world. The things are changing very quickly and therefore, Please try to adopt the changes. Don't oppose the changes. If you cannot create the changes, those who have created those changes, look at them critically and look at them sympathetically as well. Critically and sympathetically. So that the people, should, you should, we should be able to understand why they have created this change. And if it is good for us, adopt it. I think uh, after all this, I 
I cannot say anything because it was such a motivational and inspiring talk by Professor Iqbal Khan. And I'm really thankful in the end to you for giving us time. And I have to mention to our viewers that Professor Iqbal Khan uh, just came out of the, uh, from an emergency surgery and immediately uh, came to this program. Uh, I, uh, it's tiring to, but, but it, at the same time, it's inspire, inspiring as well to see. I, I feel energy, energized after this talk. So I'm really thankful to you, sir. Grateful and thankful to everyone uh, who will listen to you and you particularly. And I'm th thankful to you that you have selected uh, a humble person. Uh, I am humble enough to say that uh, whatever I said is from my heart. I, I feel that this country need good people. This country need good physicians. This country need good ed educationists. And this country is not a bad country. Our people are really very good. Our people are really very good. Please, uh, I will uh, request all those uh, come together. Come together and come up to s solve our own problem. And then everything, inshallah, will be, our future will be very bright. Thank you, Amir, sir. And thanks a lot to all those who have uh, listened and seen this. Please remember to give your feedback in the comments and take care for the time being. Uh, Allah is in life.